Oftentimes, people see Francis as a statue in a garden with the birds and the animals, which is a lovely image. But Francis was radical. Francis was for social justice. Francis worked with lepers. Francis did things that the ordinary human being during that time um, simply didn't do. When I think about Franciscan spirituality, I think about something that's authentic, something that's very holy, making that association with all of creation. There is intentional transformation that takes place in this environment. We're all here because we make a choice to be here. And the growth that results in the community, academically, spiritually, we approach it as intentional transformation. I was studying to become a teacher in Mexico. I want to go to, up to the mountains to rural communities and, and, and be there with the people. And that idea, that sense of vocation was what helped me to connect that into the Franciscan way of life. One thing that I have experienced is the great sense of hospitality, genuine hospitality, to all those who, who come and, and, and see this little place, uh, you know, the Franciscan School of Theology. as a big heart in the corner right here. One of the things that I really wanted was to be in an academic environment and really get a different perspective on how people live, how they minister. I think each individual within the FST community is able to pursue their ministry in a way that's personal to them. It's a very can-do environment. It really helps you to reflect on it in a much deeper way, a different way. study in the Franciscan tradition is very important. Academically speaking, it's, it's very rigorous. It sometimes becomes very hard. We are in the end of the semester right now. <laughs> and my pores are coming, all this stress right now. <laughs> when you do a research paper, whether it's in the scriptures and theology and Christology and sacraments, uh, lit liturgy, going through and reflecting deeply and, uh, and those ideas have to be back with uh, serious research and that means burying sometimes ourselves in the books. But you are studying in a community. There is the solidarity to each other, you know. It's a great sense of accompaniment. The Franciscan School is part of the Graduate Theological Union. And when we take classes and courses in other schools, it's a true ecumenical dialogue. Everything that I'm learning allows me to be present with people. That's really what hospital chaplaincy is all about. The first day that I was in the hospital, it was like no other feeling, like this is really the ministry that I'm called to do. Something to think about. Each patient that I visit, each family member, each encounter that I have with a staff member, I'm able to take what I'm learning in this environment and to be able to apply it in that environment. It's so connected with a fundamental question that we continuously ask ourselves in this school. And the question is, you know, who is God? And, and, and we come with answers such as, God is love, God is mercy, God is forgiveness. Then the question, the next question that has to come with that is, how do you explain the goddess love to a group of people such those as the day laborers, the jornaleros? A group of people that continuously are experiencing rejection, exploitation, abuse, who come every day 
and with very few possibilities that they will go to work, how do you tell them that God is love? The three years that I've been here in, in FST, I have been able to build that trust. It's accompany them, it's walking with them, and many, many other times, suffering with them. Amazing, amazing the, the, the things that happen, you know. Uh, Innocencio, one of the laborers that, that I was talking with him today, uh, he shared his, his uh, story. His daughter died uh, five months ago. 17 years old, kidney failure. And he was here, he couldn't go. And you can tell that probably this is the first time that he was able to share that. His eyes began to watering and then crying. Because when you see that, when you experience that, I believe that's when metanoia happens, the conversion of mind and heart. When you see Innocencio uh, crying, then, then you don't see nothing else than, you know, the face of God right there in that moment. So it is not about explaining things. It's about showing them by our presence, by talking to them, by shaking hands. It's a clear a sign, you know, God will never reject them. That they will realize, yeah, we, we are not totally forgotten. If Francis lived today, what would he be doing? Would he be um, working with sick people who had AIDS, who had cancer? I mean, would he be out on the street corner? Would he be doing the kind of work that Martine is doing with the day laborers? Yes. And, you know, on the other side of the street, we laugh so hard. <laughs> even through the pain, even through the suffering, even through all these days of waiting and waiting and waiting, there is hope. Through my life, I try to do my best, you know. And so I would like to think uh, that I will be able to to the words of peace and good, something that Francis constantly say to anyone, peace and good, you know, that those peace and good are concrete actions and, and that they will bring that into the world. It's exciting to be part of a tradition that's 800 years old, but that also continues to change and to grow. I think the combination that we have here, and we talk about it a lot, is head and heart. And it all really weaves together. You know, we're an integrated reality. Mind, body, soul are just different perspectives of one integrated reality. And I think that's a very important thing for us in our ministry, you know, that I'm able to be here in this school, a wonderful place, and I'm able to look into the wisdom of my professors and the wisdom of my peers, the students, into the books, and then go to the outside, go to these people who are experiencing all the country, and be able to show them, you know, that it, 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 indeed, uh, God is love.